Today we're doing two things, both at the same chair. We're taking a look at resizing a Permobile M3, and then also taking it apart, because it's a confusing mystery that I need to figure out how it works, and stuff like that. Anyways, enjoy! Well, I got another chair. It's not one for me to necessarily use, but it is very orange. It's this uh, M3 right here. A friend wound up trading it for some camera gear that I wasn't using, and uh, this was his backup chair. It's actually been in a video before. I think it was vlog 467 or 76 or something like that. Anyways, I'll put a link up above and down below for that video. But, um, yeah, I haven't had an M3 before. There's a few things I'm curious about on this, and it has the newer style joystick that's Bluetooth compatible. I've been trying to find one of these things on eBay for a while, but they're always really expensive. And then the one that went for $80, I forgot that the auction ended and, well, someone else bought it. So, anyways, with this, I will finally be able to make a video showing how to use the Bluetooth functionality of it using, uh, like, a computer mouse or controlling your phone or something like that. We'll get to that later, but... It is handy to have one of these things now. But at the moment, this thing is set up with a 17 inch width. So I'm probably going to, actually I am, that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna take the seat pan off, we're gonna widen out the frame a little bit. And then also, I'm going to need to change the seat depth as well. I'm not sure what it's set at at the moment, but I need to get this as long as possible. I'm not gonna use it as a daily, simply because the suspension on M3 chairs uh, it's not anywhere close to these F3s, and as bumpy as this thing is, there's no way I can use it as a daily. My back just, yeah, that ain't gonna work. It was kind of funny though. I was I was looking and I was like, hey, I can just adjust the shocks down, right? The shocks are already set as far as they can possibly go. <laughs> so whoever had this previously backed these all the way off to where there's basically no threads left. Now, I've never pulled the wheels off of one of these M3s. I'm kind of curious to see what the suspension linkage looks like in here, because I think they're running one of those scenarios where this front caster wheel lifts up and down and also kind of rotates the drive motor. But then again, the drive motors are mounted under the plastic shroud, so anyways, I don't know. We're gonna take the wheels off and see what's going on inside there. I'm really curious to see if anything can be done to make the suspension better on these things. I mean, I don't even know, I don't even know if there are front shocks on them. So anyhow, I'm gonna grab some tools. We're gonna pull the seat pan off of this. We're gonna widen it out a little bit. I've got some lateral supports around here. My brakes are on and clicking. Turn those off. There we go. I've got some lateral supports around here somewhere. We're gonna stick on this thing as well. And basically just kind of get it set up as a chair that I can hop in and use and kind of test some things out and whatnot. So anyways, yay, a new wheelchair. <laughs> All right, resizing these chairs is surprisingly easy. What is this thing? I'm using this other tripod. I can't find my good one for whatever reason. I guess that happens when you move. Let's pull this back fabric off of here. So the stock Permobile seating systems, this is sort of their main universal one. It adjusts from 17 inches all the way up to 23 inches wide. And all the hardware and everything you need is already underneath here. And basically all you have to do is take this off and... Actually, will this flip up? Hey, it will. Sweet. It's, it's, it's weird having a stock functional chair that actually does what it's supposed to. But anyways, we just have to pull the seat pan off. And all the hardware is already here. You just basically remove a few bolts and slide some things around. And you can resize the width and depth of these to pretty much whatever you need within that. Well, it goes in... Um, I think two inch steps, but yeah, you can you can adjust it without having to buy any extra hardware or anything like that. So we're just gonna throw that on the floor, <laughs> but we're just gonna take off these four screws that hold the seat pan on. Then there's two sections of this that overlap with each other, and that's how they're able to set the width on this and not have to get a new seat pan. So these just basically slide back and forth and will accommodate uh, whatever size you select. Okay, I've just made this tripod into the world's largest selfie stick. If we look down here at this base plate, you're gonna see there's a bunch of screws, obviously. 
But if you look close, there's labels. There's L's on these ones, B's on these ones, B over here, L over here, and then this is for the back as well. Basically what you do, if we want to pull the leg rest out or scoot the seat back backwards, you remove these screws associated with that. So for the back, we'll take out these two here, these two here, and this one here. Now this one, actually I guess we can't slide the back back any further because as you can see we're on the last hole here. This is where the actuator mounts and I can bring it forward this far but it's already back as far as it'll go. So if we look at the legs, we've got one more hole here. So it looks like all we can do on this is slide the leg rest forward. If we want to change the width of the seat, that would be these screws along these rails and these four screws back here. So I'm going to take these apart and we're going to set this to, I think 19 inches is typically what I do on these things. The, it's, it's got the uh, stock super wide armrests on it. And right now, these are just about in line or maybe a little bit wider than the tires. So we're not going to go any wider on these because I don't want to, you know, have to worry about getting through doorways and stuff. So I think what we're going to do first is remove these and widen out this seat pan. I will remove these front plastics though. These come up pretty easy. You just kind of grab them here at the side. The clip points are right here. So you don't want to grab it all the way out here because that'll bend, but just basically right here in the middle and pull straight forward on each side. And we've got these little clips here that hold that on. These side pieces, you just basically grab them and pull them straight forward. And now we should be able to loosen up these. So for those of you that don't know, I've got a website set up. It's been linked below in a lot of the recent videos. It's brokenwheelchairs.com. I've got service manuals for all the permobile stuff, some Envicare stuff, and I'm trying to work on quantum service manuals. There's kind of some legalities with quantum, trying to post anything that's built by pride. But anyways, uh, it, all this stuff is, is covered in the service manuals. So I may not be showing exactly step-by-step -step how to do this, but if you need to do any seating or sizing or anything like that, you can just go to the website, links below, and uh, download the appropriate service manual for your model of Permobile. I think I've got all of them in there at this point for all of the current chairs that are being sold and most of the ones from about the last 12 to 15 years or so. So the positioning strap is also mounted to it. But the nice thing with these permobiles is everything is labeled. So you can see we've got 17, 19, 21, and 23. So it was at 17, the screw is in this hole. I'm gonna put it back on using this hole next to the 19 inch label. So they make it really easy to do all this stuff and you know not get everything mixed up. So let's pull this out here. You can see the hole lines up there. We'll drop this screw or bolt or whatever it is back in. That's the wrong one. And some of these are different lengths as well. I believe the inner ones are shorter. Uh, anyways, they're all different lengths. Just pay attention to which one's which when you take them out and put them back in. Okay, and then we'll slide the other side out two inches. Screws back in. And you're gonna have an extra screw when you do this, assuming it was set to 17. So I just put that back in the hole that it was in. It's not actually holding anything, but at least you won't lose it in case you need to resize the chair later. These screws here go down into the main seat frame, so it holds everything good and solid. Now, typically I like to keep these chairs as short as possible. Even though I'm not gonna be using this thing as a daily, I'm still going to extend the leg rests out a little bit. It's gonna make the chair a little bit longer, but I have to have as much seat pan depth as possible to be able to use this chair. So we're gonna loosen up these screws here that are marked L for leg rest. And there is one additional step when you're adjusting the back rest or, or the uh, leg rest, basically changing this depth here, I'll show you that. Here on the side of the chair, on the back, this is the rail that goes along the side of the seat frame. You can see on the back here, we've got three different holes. Since we're going to be extending the leg rests out, we're going to have to take this screw out and it's going to end up back here in this hole. There's one of these on each side, so basically just unscrew these. You don't have to touch the front one, you can leave it in place. 
Then same thing here on the other side. There we go. Back up top here now. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these completely. Oh, and the other thing with this chair too, it has manual leg rests. It has this little pull mechanism here on the side. You pull this bolt and then, you know, swing them up and down manually by hand. I'm going to show also, I don't know if it, it'll probably be a separate video, but I'm gonna show how easy it is to swap this out for powered leg rests. Basically, all you need to do is buy the actuator, install it, and plug it in. Um, it's, uh, it's significantly easier than you might think. And at the same time, it makes me think, well, why is that option so expensive? All the hardware is already here. I mean, are you really paying like 2,500 bucks or whatever for an actuator? <laughs> Anyways, at this point, we've got all the bolts out. All we have to do is grab the front of the seating or the leg rest and slide it forward. If you wanted to keep an eye on all these wires and stuff here, there's plenty of slack, but depending on how stuff was routed, you just want to kind of keep an eye on it. But we're just basically going to slide it forward like that. And when you look down through these holes, you can see that there's, well, the thread holes line up. And all we do is put everything back in now. Do not tighten them up all the way at this point. Since all this is kind of loose, you want to get all the screws in by hand before you go tightening them down. Because see, like this one here doesn't quite line up. I have to sort of wiggle it a little bit. And now it'll go in the, uh, into the threads. So just get them all started. And then I like to go around to the back and get the rear two tightened down first. There we go, those are good and tight. Now we'll just go around and tighten down the rest and that's pretty much it. I like to check the rest of the bolts while I'm here just because you never know who's been in here and it's good to make sure everything's tight. And there we go, we're ready to put our seat pan back on. We've widened it out uh, two inches and lengthened it one inch. Well, there we go. We've successfully resized our seat pan. Now this backrest is a little bit narrow and I don't use these Permobile side bolsters at all. So I'm probably gonna pull these off of here. And actually, not that I'm looking at this, yeah, I'm gonna have to drop these armrests way down. They're really tall. At this point, I'm gonna take a break because um, this reflexia. I'm going to take a break for a few minutes, stop leaning over, then we're going to get the lateral supports. Actually, I have to find the lateral supports, and then we're going to install those. They're pretty simple as well. Okay, I couldn't find all the parts for the ones that I thought I had, so I just pulled some of the lateral supports off of my backup C300 I'm not using at the moment. It is interesting, though. There's a couple different versions of these. There's these ones here. They have two screws. Then there's these older ones that have four screws. I don't know if they're actually designed for different accessories like transfer handles or something, but I kind of like these because there's four screws holding them on as opposed to just the two. I've never broken these, but um, yeah, just interesting to note there's a couple different versions. I think all I'm going to do is set this up so I can take the side guards off of this chair and put them on this one while I'm using it, just running around here and there since, again, I keep saying it, I'm not using this thing daily. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so these are really easy to put on. Seeing as how we've already got the front covers off this chair, basically all you do is slide these things onto the track. Like so. Then you position this wherever you need it, tighten down all four screws and you're good to go. And then for the other side, same deal. Just basically slide these in here. And there we go. At this point, we're good to put our front plastics back on. So I'll start with these little side pieces. They just hook on like this. Press into the rail on each side. Then front cover snaps right on. We need to adjust these armrests down a fairly significant amount. They're way up here. They need to be like down here somewhere. Uh, just these four bolts on the back here. I've, oh, that's tight. 
Um, I've covered how to do this. <clears throat> Maybe we'll use the built-in Allen wrench for this. I've covered how to do this in other videos, so yeah, whatever. Holy crap. I just bent that. I'm gonna grab my 3 8 drive Allen sockets for this. I'm pretty sure. Is that even gonna snap back in here now? Huh, well that's bent now. Um, I'm pretty sure these have never been removed, hence they are resisting my efforts. There we go. Yeesh. Okay, so loosen those up. Helps if you take off the backrest plate for this, because the headrest mount is in the way. And now we just turn this screw for a while. This is going to change the angle of the armrest while you're doing it, so about halfway through the process you're going to have to tighten up these turnbuckles. Okay, I'll tighten these up again. So now we can tighten these back down. I don't know if you're going to see on camera, but yeah, see how I push down on one and the other one lifts up? Kind of like that. The joystick side is heavier, so I push it all the way down and figure out what the maximum is, let it go all the way up, and then I hold it somewhere in the middle as I tighten these back up. Oh yeah, we still got to get these things set, our uh, side guard mounts. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna put our seat pan or seat back pan or whatever back in here. Now here's a cushion I use for everything. It's the Ride Java. It's uh, somewhere in between their. Oh. Wait. Maybe I didn't need to make the seat pan this long. Look at this. Cushions lined up at the front. Look at all this space we have back here. Wait, is the pan different on an M on an M3 versus an F3? 21 and a half. No, it's the same. Oh! I just realized the backrest I have on this chair. This is, uh... This is not a factory one. As you can see, it's, uh... It's got a little bit more depth than your typical permobile seat. We're gonna set these up just like they were on the steampunk chair. So... I think that... is probably a good spot there. Uh, I need to find the back fabric that I'm going to use. Let's lower this back down. It looks a little bit funky right now, doesn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to find the back fabric, put that on there. I'm going to hop into this thing and see... I might need to shorten the leg rest back up. Yeah, whatever. There's a significant amount of space back here. <laughs> Again, trial and error. I've done this dozens and dozens of times. And it still takes me a while to get everything correct. Like, I was just basing it off the chair that I'm sitting in, yet somehow it turned out different. If you're gonna adjust these things, give yourself some time. It is not a quick process. Can't really tell how this fits. There's definitely way too much space back here, but the cushion's in the right spot for my legs in the front. Maybe I need a deeper cushion. Um, huh. Well, let's try out the seat elevator. Well, it seems to work. Alright, well, back down to earth. I'm going to do a little bit more fine tuning on this. It's, I'm not going to film it because it's kind of monotonous and repetitive and other words that have the same meaning. So I'm going to look around my stuff and see if I have a cushion that maybe fits this better. The depth actually feels pretty good. The cushion is obviously too short, but this thing actually feels pretty good. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, after a little bit of time and screwing around and some cleaning and whatnot, this chair is done. Check it out. Ta-da! So we got the lateral supports or the side guards put on here. Got the cushion on, we widened out the seat pan, lengthened the seat pan. Um, I didn't adjust the height on the backrest, that seemed fine enough. Got the armrest lowered down and the angle set properly. Got the leg rests all adjusted and cleaned as well. And the little pads here, one of them was bent, so 
I was able to take apart that bracket and get that taken care of. And yeah, I think we're good to go. It's uh, a bright orange M3. <laughs> now this is probably the one time that I would say these orange reflector caps are okay. Normally I cannot stand that orange color at all, but since the rest of the chair is already orange, hey, whatever. Unfortunately, I can't sit in this thing for more than a couple of minutes at the most. It absolutely kills my back. It's the problem with stock permobile seating and my back. I need an aftermarket backrest. So, at least it works. We got it together. I can hop in the thing and run around. We're going to do a little more exploration on this thing. I don't know if I'm going to take apart the... Eh, screw it. Let's, uh, I'm going to bring the jack in here and we're going to pop this wheel off. I want to take a look at how the suspension works on this thing. And really to see if there is any suspension at all on the drive wheels. Because it sure doesn't feel like there is. Welcome back to the laundry room floor. Interesting note. We've got the M3 out here. The jack actually slid right underneath it. And I didn't have to like lift the thing up or do anything weird to get it on there. So apparently it has a little bit more ground clearance. The F3 is sitting on suspension on the front, however, and I did lower the springs quite a bit. I mean, we're only talking about that much of a difference maybe, but interesting note. So let's uh, get this wheel taken off. I want to look at what suspension there is or is not or whatever on, well, behind the wheel on this thing. Not had one of these apart before. If it's anything like the F3, these are going to have a ton of Loctite on them. However, I know these are not the original tires because this chair has over 1,700 miles on it. This thing's had to have gone through four or five sets of tires in that mileage. One of the things I want to try with this chair is getting some air filled is getting some air filled tires to put on here. I know that will improve the ride quality a little bit. The only problem with air filled tires then is having to worry about flat tires. Anyway, so let's see what's going on. Um, huh. It would appear as though we do not have suspension on the front. Looks, oh, wait. Hang on, let me set the camera down here. So they did something kind of interesting here. I saw this little, whoops. Huh, I haven't seen that before. Some spacer thing or something. But anyways, uh, so the motors are pointing forward on this. On the F3, they're pointing backwards. But direct your attention to right here. Apparently, this rear shock is, in fact, connected to this front assembly. That's interesting. So if I lift up on this front tire... But it looks like what we've got going on here. We've got a pivot, which is mounted to a plate. And that plate has the motor mounted to it. Then we've got the shock absorber here, which connects to the rear caster wheel. And then there's a tab that comes off of the pivot for the rear caster arm that connects to this little damper here, little rubber thing. And that connects to the back of the plate the motor's on. So, I guess it kind of has suspension, but... The problem is, when you hit a bump, I mean, this tire is going to go up when you hit a bump, which, in a roundabout way, compresses that shock. But when your drive tire hits the bump, your rear suspension is maxed out, or the rear shock is maxed out. So you can see here how the motor assembly is separate from the center frame. See how that's kind of moving up and down? So I guess they do technically have suspension, but not in the way I was thinking. And it makes sense because when you hit a bump with this thing, you're sitting right over the drive tire. I'm just thinking and looking here. I guess in theory, someone could maybe replace this with a shock absorber. I don't know if there's ones that short. We'd probably have to extend this down to about here, which would... I mean, there's maybe an inch for ground clearance there, but... I suppose this little thing could be replaced. Let's look at this weird little rubber thing a little bit closer as I move the chair. 
Well, I guess it does technically have suspension on all the wheels, kind of. But what it doesn't have is suspension when something hits your drive wheel, like when you run over something and this tries to get forced up. Because in theory, it would need to extend the shock further. And the shock is, well, I guess there's a couple more turns we could go on it. There. Now there's no threads left at all. It was already pulled most of the way out, but um, yeah, so that's the difference between the F3 and the M3. The F3, which we took apart before, if I find the footage, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put a picture of that up here so you can see. But the motors on it are facing backwards, and there's shocks on the back caster arms as well as the front pivots that the motors are sitting on. So effectively, you're sitting on sprung suspension. This, you're kind of not really sitting on anything other than this little damper right here, which isn't going to provide a lot of shock absorption. So... Technically, yes, it has suspension on all the wheels, but is it any good? In my opinion, no. If you need something that rides good, get yourself an F3. The M3 is completely different. So I think, well, I know, getting air-filled tires for this, oh, these are already getting bold. Um, air-filled tires for this would make a huge difference, just on the drive tires. Uh, I'm going to grab the tape measure and actually take photos of this. I forgot to do that on the F3. But I'm going to get some photos of this and see if there's some sort of parts or something I could source maybe. I feel like this could be fixable. I think it would make the chair sit with the front up a little bit further if we did put a shock right there. So yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, this is interesting. But it makes total sense as to why the ride, qu the ride quality is so different on these two. Well, there you go, I guess. If you want a mid-wheel drive chair and... I mean, you technically want suspension. Now, again, this <laughs> this is just me. I'm a pretty special use case when it comes to having to have really good suspension on my chair. This would be fine for most of the people out there, I think. But in my case, the F3 totally takes the cake. Um, <laughs> there, there is no comparison at all to this ride quality. These shocks were already pretty much maxed out. I turned this one. Yeah, we, we've got that thing turned down as far as it'll go. And it's definitely beyond the spec of what you're supposed to set it at. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, um, air-filled tires. I think that's going to be the only thing we can do here. Huh. All right, well, I'm going to put this back together. That was kind of some interesting exploratory looking around at the M3. Is it a bad chair? No, not at all. It's just not for me. Uh, especially when I've compared it to this F3 I'm in right now. I think it's one of those things where the chair was already designed, it's good at what it's going to do. Bottom line, I think air-filled tires are going to be the only thing that would potentially make that chair usable as a daily for me, and obviously changing the backrest and all that. Anyways, I just hadn't seen one of those taken apart before, I had no idea how they worked. So now I know, now you know, maybe. Um, and yeah, I think we're just going to leave it at that. But now that we have that thing in the fleet, I've got a few more videos planned for it. It's got the newer joystick on it, so I can finally do a tutorial on how the Bluetooth works on that joystick controlling your computer mouse or your phone or something like that. It's all pretty self-explanatory, but there's a few options that I want to dig into and see if I can explain or if there's an easy way to change the settings without a programmer. Also, it's got manual leg rests on it, so we're going to be converting those over to power. That's pretty easy to do as well. I am going to be ordering some air-filled tires because I want to know how it's going to work. I, I, I know it's going to improve the, white, the ride quality, but I want to know if it's going to be up to the level that I'm expecting. Because I know I'm not the only one out there that requires a chair with really good suspension. So I'm going to be ordering a set of those tires. We're going to jam them on there. These ones are bald anyways, so that's kind of a no-brainer. I've got a list here. And also, because it has that newer joystick with the soft key buttons on it, that means it has built-in lighting support. Now, all the permobiles will support lighting with the stock hardware, but the point that makes it not work is the joystick. Uh, this, this is one of the older style ones. If you don't have the lighting buttons on it, hooking up the lights isn't going to do any good. Isn't going to... I can't talk today. It's not going to do you any good connecting lights to the, to the ICS module in the chair or the seating controller unless you have lighting buttons on your joystick. All the newer joysticks have that baked in. So... The nice thing about the M3s as well is they have a mounting plate on the front that you can attach lights to. So I'm finally going to do a proper tutorial on how to install lights on those chairs. 
I know I've mentioned it in a few other videos and I've installed lights on other chairs. I kind of showed how I did it, but not really. Whatever. It's time to do a proper video on that. I think that was all the things I put on the list for now. But anyways, it's a handy chair to have. It's one of those things. I've got a lot of wheelchairs. None of them technically fit me properly, but it's good to have all this stuff around so I can test things out and be able to share my opinions about them. And for example, someone's like, hey, there's something wrong with my suspension. Now I know there's a weird rubber damper in there that I don't know if they break or not, but now I know. If I didn't have the chair, I wouldn't know. And it was totally worth trading the old camera equipment that I wasn't using for this chair. But anyways, there you go. I'm not sure if this is the end of the video or I'm doing something next, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs>